I have some forms that I'd like you to fill out, and, and we're not quite done yet, but I, I do want to have you fill out some of these forms. And these forms will I help you to identify an event like going to a social gathering. And then what your current thought might be that is not helping you. For example, you wrote, you said here that you don't go to there. So your behavior changes and your behavior changes because your thought is that things are going to be terrible. You're, I think you said you're going to make everybody miserable and you're going to be miserable. And then your emotion from something like that is you feel sorry for yourself, you feel hopeless, you feel frustrated, despair. And I have another form for you. You call this form thinking alternative thoughts. So once again here, I want you to write down the negative thought and then the thought error. So a thought error, for example, let's just say my life used to be perfect before I had tinnitus, now it's horrible. What kind of a thought error would that be? You, you remember earlier I showed you a list of different thought errors. And so what kind of a thought might that be? My life used to be perfect before I had tinnitus, now it's horrible. Well, it's kind of an all or nothing thing yeah. that uh, um, maybe my life wasn't that full of sunshine okay. before. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, no, that, but I think you're exactly right on that one. So you're right. You're, so your negative thought was, my life used to be perfect, now it's horrible. It is an, an all or nothing thought error. Mm -hmm. and, and by the way, these thought errors are quite common. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of us engage in them probably on an almost daily basis. Mm -hmm. So it's not something negative to you, but it's just something I want you to identify. Mm -hmm. And then an alternative thought to my life was perfect, now it's horrible. What might that be? Well, maybe my life wasn't that perfect before, okay. um, and maybe it's not that horrible now. Okay, all right, okay, and that's very valid too. Here's another form that might help you. We call this form identification of maladaptive behavior. And a great example of that was something like you wake up in the morning, and, and what happens to you when you do wake up in the morning? I'll, I'll ask you specifically. Mm. You wake up in the morning, first thing you hear is your tinnitus. Yeah. What, is, Some, what, what do you do about that? Sometimes it's so horrible uh, when I wake up in the morning that I just want to stay in bed. Okay. And I, I never get anywhere and have a horrible day when, okay. when that happens. So let me see if I understand this. <clears throat> You hear the tinnitus first thing in the morning. Mm. You feel that you're going to have a horrible day. Mm. And the result of that, the behavior that is the result of that thought, is that you just stay home, mm. stay in bed? Yeah. And what is the evidence that you have that would say to you, I heard my tinnitus first thing in the morning, I know the day is going to be horrible? Because when I stay home, it will be horrible. <laughs> Well, you're right. When you stay home, it might be horrible. You're, you're absolutely true. So there's a possibility that if you get up and you go for a walk or you get up and you go to the shopping mall or something like that or, or get up and, and play with your new son, it may not be as horrible. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. It's actually when you, now that you say it, that when, when I go for a walk uh, those days, that it, it's... It, it, it helps me. Okay. Yeah. So in, in this form then, the maladaptive behavior would be staying home and kind of feeling sorry for yourself. Because mm. if you stay home and you feel sorry for yourself, the likelihood is you're going to sit around and think about your tinnitus all day. Mm, yeah. So an alternative behavior might be? To not stay at home. Not stay at home. Maybe to just bite the bullet and go out okay. there and go out there and again and the evidence that you you say you've had some evidence that going out there that going mm. for a walk is helpful yeah yeah okay yeah, i think so yeah okay so that's very important so again what i want you to do with this and you don't have to spend hours doing this i want you to do this simply so that you begin to recognize that you have things that occur in your life they invoke thoughts mm. 
If the thought is a negative thought, the result is going to be certain behaviors. And those behaviors may or may not be in your best interest yeah. when it comes to regaining the quality of life that we want to regain, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. All right. There's one final form that I think we can consider. And this is, we call this form, analyzing perceived problems. So, for example, um, I know that a very common problem for people who have tinnitus, not everyone, but, very, but a lot of people, is that they feel that the um, tinnitus keeps them awake at night. Mm. Is that a problem for you? Sometimes, yes. Sometimes, sometimes okay. Sometimes it's very difficult to fall asleep sometimes. Okay. And do you fall asleep eventually? Yes, typically, I guess. Okay. All right. So what I want you to do is, again, I would like you to take some time, write down what the perceived problem is. For example, tinnitus keeps me awake all night. Maybe you have that thought. But then I want you to put down a realistic assessment. Uh, you mentioned, we talked earlier about, the tinnitus makes me crazy. Yeah. So that's a perceived problem. But what would be a realistic assessment? I mean, do you really believe you will, uh, you told me earlier, you don't really believe you're going to become crazy. So what it would be a realistic expectation? Um, negative or positive? <laughs> well, realistic. Either one. Either one. Just realistically, do you believe you will go crazy? Probably not. Okay. So but realistic, you, you believe you will be bothered by your tinnitus and that there will be times when you'll be less capable of doing things that you want? Is that a realistic statement? That's a realistic statement, okay. yes. Okay. Um, but it, 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 it gets kind of... Uh, when I have these, these uh, depression periods mm -hmm. and when I think that it might drive me crazy, mm -hmm. um, um, then it, it gets kind of a blur. I can't see my future okay. clearly. So, okay. so it's, it's more, it's, and, and it's from that that it's despair. And okay. So, so it's, it's I, I don't know if driving me crazy is probably right and won't be okay. crazy as such, but I don't know what will happen. Okay, and, and that is realistic. I mm -hmm. think that that's a fair statement, that you're uncertain about the future. Yeah. I think that that's a very fair statement. Yeah. But being uncertain about the future gives you some possibility for hope and despair. Mm -hmm. But saying you will be going crazy gives you no possibility. Mm -hmm. So I, I think, again, being able to you know, really kind of analyze what you perceive as mm -hmm. the problem and putting down a realistic assessment of it might be of some help, and it's something mm -hmm. then that we would discuss mm -hmm. the next time you come in and visit me, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Those are the forms I wanted you to, fig um, to fill out. Okay, with that, I would like to see you again in one week. I'd like you to fill out some of these forms, mm -hmm. and we'll pick up right here in one week. And please, if you have any questions, give me a call, mm -hmm. okay?